everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to Knowledge and Nonsense. Today is March 22nd, and I'm excited to be here with my guest host, Miss is Courtney Mace Davis. How are you, Courtney? I am doing well. How are you, Sharon? I am well. I am well. I'm excited about tonight's conversation. Mm, I'm excited too. about coming out of winter. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about coming out of lockdown, uh, yep. you know, being able to do a few more things. And of course, tonight we're going to be talking about customer service and SPD. Like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Mm -hmm. Are there ways that maybe customer service can bridge the gap that typically seems to be between SPD and the OR? Yep, absolutely. So, I'm excited about those things. Are you excited about anything? I, I'm excited about a lot of good things. I'm excited to hear about Marilyn's experience at AORN. She, I've seen lots of good things on LinkedIn and um, people getting together in person again. Um, Scrubball, HSPA, there's so many good things coming this spring. I just, I can't wait. Yeah, we do have some awesome people. So let me do this. As I bring the people in, let's just play that intro one more time. Guys, you know what to do. Share this video. If you have questions or comments, please put your comments in. And this time, let us know where, your work, where you're watching from. Let us know where you're watching from and if there's something about customer service that you would like to see or that we can help you maybe implement where you are. Who knows? Just let us know those things as I turn off my phone. And when we come back, we'll have everybody else that we need to have on the show. Marilyn Burns, Alessandra, and Candice Kaufman. All right, and we're back. Welcome to Knowledge and Nonsense. Courtney, you had mentioned something about ARN. What were you saying? Yes, I was saying I was looking forward to hearing about Marilyn's experience. I've seen, I've been following her on LinkedIn, and it sounds like they're having a great time finally being in person again. Yes. It is amazing to be back in person mm -hmm. with people at a conference. <laughs> yeah. It's just an inspiration. <laughs> I saw on LinkedIn, I saw a marching band bringing oh, it yeah. in, doing the thing. That's Did you see cool. that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's a lot going on down here in New Orleans, I'll tell you. They went all <laughs> right out. now, there's a huge storm. So, <laughs> no, it's been great. It's been great. Everybody's energy is up. It's wonderful to communicate with people and see people. And there's just so much to be positive about in our industry, especially yeah. now that we can see each other again. Right. I yeah, am excited sure. too. I'll be at HSPA. Yes. I'll also be at um, Next week, I have something I, we'll get to do virtual. This upcoming week, even though it's not in person, there is a virtual uh, training. Alessandra, I believe you're speaking there, right? Absolutely. Uh, the West Wisconsin Central Service Chapter is doing a two-day event, 10 CEUs, and I'll be speaking on 326, the Saturday event, talking about retention and what leaders can do, employees can do, as well as union uh, leadership, what they can do to help us keep our staff once we gain our talent. Wow. That, that's good. You, you, that's one hour? Including that's uh training? yes one 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 oh, for me okay. but 10 yeah. hours of content for the spd <laughs> professionals excellent excellent hey candace you're joining us from colorado you're not that's really in tornadoes right now what's going on in your area <laughs> yeah right no we're just uh it wants to snow but like you said i'm ready to get rid of winter so right tell it no <laughs> yes please no it's warm down here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. finished doing some meet and greets in California and coming back to the Midwest. I was so Ooh. excited because our dogwood trees are flowering right now. Oh, nice. But it snowed last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right back to it. Midwest. Right, right back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, so lots going on there. Today we're going to talk about customer service. Guys, Courtney is my co-host, and I'm so excited that she decided to share her mm -hmm. time. I love all of the co-hosts that I get to spend time with because these are the people who are working day in and day out in the industry. And, you know, um, sometimes we get so used to seeing certain faces or hearing certain voices, but we want to be sure that the faces and the voices we're hearing are still doing the work, are still doing the things diligently and, mm -hmm. and a part of the, the topics that we're discussing. 
And so customer service and SPD, who wants to jump first and say, what's that? I'm picking on Candace. Candace <laughs> let's do it. Customer service and SPD. If I just said those words, what do you say? Hot seat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, that it, it's a tough one because I think um, for the longest time, customer service and SPD has traditionally been a one-way street. Um, so it, it's very challenging to uphold standards for customer service and really embody what that looks like for your departments. Um, when you're constantly getting barked at from ORs and vendors and physicians, you know, so um, it's, it's an uphill battle, but well worth it. I think if we want mm -hmm. to get to that level of professionalism that we hope becomes, you know, a standard and a norm and what people think of when they think about sterile processing, um, you got to fight for it and you got to set the tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I saw someone ask a question on LinkedIn about whether or not it was quality over quantity, right? We have this conversation mm -hmm. all the time. And I responded back that it, it's both, right? If I go and I want to get something done, I want it to be timely and I want it to be high quality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, customer service is really about making that your goal. And then when you fall out, having a recovery plan so that your your patrons don't walk away with a bad taste in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. That's a great point. Yep. So... Where do we get our expectation from? Like I may go into McDonald's or something and I'll be like, they have horrible customer service. Mm -hmm. but it's a lot of different generations, a lot of different zip codes. The more we travel, our marketplace, including healthcare, yes. is increasingly more global. Mm -hmm. So who is to say what customer service is or isn't? Mm, right. It used to be the customer's always right. And you treat others how you want to be treated. I remember a training once that told us to treat the customer how they wish to be treated. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. but to that, to your point, how do I how am I navigating all these intersections at one time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very confusing now. I think with the covid pandemic. We've accepted a lower level of customer service yes. in so many areas of our life that uh, it's our expectations are so murky because mm -hmm. like like I was I started out my my career actually in retail after mm -hmm. I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. And definitely it was the customer is always right. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes. OK, we'll give you your money back. You know, obviously we can't do that in, in SPD, but that same mindset and that smile on your face and happiness is something that I believe that we all expect. Yeah. We don't get it, but that's mm -hmm. kind of our benchmark. Like we want to make people happy and we want people to be happy with our work. Mm -hmm. And now um, again, I'm out traveling and, and seeing the world again. And it's a little disappointing to think that we've lowered our standards because of something beyond our control when we mm -hmm. know better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marilyn, I just wanted to, to, I thought that was an interesting comment. Um, we tend to focus so much, I think, in SPD about the negative interactions and maybe mm -hmm. protecting our teams. But you mm -hmm. talk about, um, you know, some of the positive aspects. Um, do you think that there, or have you seen in your career an opportunity to focus on um, that positive customer service? and that relationship with the OR and how that can actually improve the entire system? Definitely. I think, and it's all, it's like, um, I'm very other driven and some people mm -hmm. are not. So I'm always like looking at the other person's response. And mm -hmm. my husband's in the automotive business and he, um, he says, what would you tell your brother mother, sister, cousin yes, yes. about this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. I really take that to heart because we're so frustrated if they're not happy with us, but yet um, we may not be presenting ourselves to them the way we would present to somebody that we love and care about. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's such a two way street for me. Yeah. And um, I think a smile, I'm a, of course I'm a sm guy smiley probably, <laughs> but um, you know, we have to own the fact that our we can't control other people. We can only mm -hmm. control our response to other people. Absolutely. And I think if we keep that in mind, we can maybe bridge the gap in communication and, like you say, in customer service, whether we think it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. 
That's yeah, thank you. Point. Yeah, exactly. I think those mm -hmm. are some great points. And I, yeah. one of the biggest challenges we face in SPD is that we have multiple customers. Yes. So it can get yes. very, very murky, right? Like uh, <laughs> physicians are customer, the vendors are customer, you know, uh, are, and they are have com parts. they have competing interests as well, right? right? Like yeah. the doctor yeah. might want it at this time, but the OR would really need it at, you know, two hours yeah. later and SPD yeah. could use another 12. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, okay. and really at the end of the day, it's the patient, right? Like yeah. it, it, it's amazing what happens when you get, you know, I get worked up on the SPD side, the OR gets worked up on the OR side. And then when you sit down and you're like, wait a second, we got to focus on the patient, right? Mm -hmm. What what does the patient need? It's easy to kind of put your personal feelings aside or get off our SPD tangents every once in a while to be like, okay, where, where can we find some common ground here and mm -hmm. bring this together? Because the patient is counting on us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. True, true. Yeah. So all right, so let's go off of the skeleton questions. This is what I love about knowledge and nonsense. We just hit something and we have different, we have leaders, again, the same way customer service has a different expectation mm -hmm. with whoever is giving it and whoever is receiving it. We just named like what, three or four customers in one walk? Right. Mm -hmm. So some manager, some director, some supervisor on the three to 11, who doesn't have what they needed and the sterilizer is down right. is having to navigate this customer service. So if yeah. we had to, and there's no, again, we're here to help. Mm -hmm. Let's picture that person. How do they, is there a placement of customer service? Is it a circle? Is it like I have three kids? So whose birthday is it today? You know? <laughs> what are we doing? How are we yeah. I mean, definitely it's going to be a, a, a step, well, step by step, right? Because there's only going to be so many functions that I can perform one after the other. Mm -hmm. And in that situation as a lead, I mean, I've been there where the sterilizer goes down and there's no supervisor to call. Or you just don't want to be the one to call somebody in the middle of the night, right? Mm -hmm. um, and my primary step was to, okay, let me go to my end user that is waiting on me um, and, and let them know first and foremost what's going on. And I would caution folks to just keep that as short as possible, because when I'm frustrated, I do not want to hear the diatribe about how, you know, it could have went well. I just need the bullet points. Sterilizers mm -hmm. down. You need this tray. Can't get it back to this time. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the ball then goes into their court about this is now a collaboration because to Candace's point, we're all members of this team. And it's not just me that has to make the call here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What I think is interesting too is in those examples we talked about, it seemed like a lot of external customers, but I even think of the shifts, you yes. know, as first shift, a customer to second shift or into third mm. shift. Yeah. Right. And yeah. sometimes we get so focused on blame and mm. what each other isn't doing instead of, you know, what leading by example, what we do need to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. And I think that's like Marilyn's point about, you know, thinking about each other. Hmm. How, did you do everything that yeah. you could do to set that person up and support them so that they had the best day possible? Or right. did you go out of your way to kind of leave this to the side and make sure that they had something to do? You know, like, where oh. did you, you know, where did you put <laughs> your energy? When I came in on the 3 to 11, so I know I didn't deliberately leave anything from the, for the 11 to 7. I know no. I didn't pass it off. <laughs> didn't. Yeah. yeah. But it happened. Yeah. That's yeah, Alexander, I agree. The col collaboration and how do you do that? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, here's this, you know, you have to be kind, but, you know, here's the situation. And we've got, and maybe it should be the patient is always right because, yes. you know, here's, there's a patient that's about to be on your table and we don't have the what's it, what's it set. Mm -hmm. But what do you think we can do? What can I pull and bring to you yeah. that? we can right. make it work Tell instead of what we normally do, which is mm. they're so demanding that they don't understand. <laughs> yeah. They, they understand, but the patient definitely doesn't understand. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So wow. we've got yeah. to come to a, an agreement yeah. on how to do something. A collaboration is key. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, we're probably going to have to take a commercial. Um, Courtney, you have a question pressing right now that, that you'd like to share. I, I can wait. You sure? Because yeah. I love when it's already. Okay, well, give us about one minute. Definitely want to say thanks to SIPS Consults. Um, give them a shout out because, you know, just because I love them and they've been here and supporting me and I love it. 
So we'll be right back in about 60 seconds. Those in the know know SIPS Consults. SIPS Consults is hiring. Confident, competent, and consistent. Starting as a consultant and a volunteer, SIPS has grown into a dynamic group of stellar, sterile processing professionals. Offering excellent benefits, 401k, and consultant in training program, we are hiring certified technicians, leads, supervisors, interim managers, educators, coordinators. Apply at recruiting at SIPSConsults.com or dial 1-866-615-7977. All right, now we're back. We are here. We're talking about customer service in SPD. We're here with Marilyn Burns, Alexandra Nicholson of the Kandra Institute, Candace Kaufman, and my co-host, Courtney Mace Davis. And we're already having a wonderful time. You guys know what to do. Put your comments in, uh, share this video. If there's something that you would like addressed, but you don't want to have your name connected to that comment, you can text that to 214-717-5921. And I will ask that question. Uh, Courtney, we're back. Okay, so I, I do have a question for the group. You know, it seems like when we talk about customer service, we tend to talk about emotions and emotional situations. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed tools in sterile processing or approaches that helps with the communication today that maybe wasn't there five or ten years ago that maybe helps take the emotions out of it or makes it more... Um, fact-based conversations. I'm just interested in how maybe your approaches have changed Absolutely. over the years. Definitely um, some things that like shift reports, uh, progress mm -hmm. reports, status reports, um, you know, really having those as a document rather than a verbal exchange uh, shifted the game around, I think, for SPD, because I know when I started, we would just stand in a circle and say, okay, sterilizer one's up, this one's down, you need those trays tomorrow, right? <laughs> and so being able to have that shift report you can come back to, but also like data is explosive now with the tracking yeah. systems, the reports, the graphs, the Excel mm -hmm. spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, transparency is there. You can't lie anymore and say SPD is the only reason why your first case don't start on time. Mm. Yeah. We got data. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. I, yeah. I think that's very powerful, though. And especially when you hear the com comments like, well, sterile processing always mm. does Ooh, something yes. or never does something. It's like, well, really, out of. <laughs> You know, a yeah. hundred times we missed it once, so yeah, right. which is significant, but it's not always. Not always. Not always. Yeah. Any. Whenever I hear "always," if someone's bringing something, <laughs> like there was a problem. Mm -hmm. If I'm, if like with the coaching or someone's fussing about the upline, and I hear "always," "never," mm. especially if it's "always," "never," and they, yeah. <laughs> then yeah. in that moment, I just say, "Okay, is it?" Is this the moment to break it down and be like, okay, who is they? Is it really always or whatever? It depends on what they're asking for. Again, if patients mm -hmm. on the table, we're going to circle back. But I know what they're about to let tell me is going to be heavily influenced by their perspective and emotion. Yep. Because they said those trigger words. Always, mm -hmm. never, and they. Yeah. 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 Whatever's coming now is not, yeah. it's not, it's not mm -hmm. that, but they need to get it off their chest. So Exactly. I think that's mm -hmm. another great point, too, is that assessing the situation is always important. I think mm -hmm. um, we're starting to see SPDs more and more involved, yes. which is great, like mm -hmm. in real time when situations happen versus I know mm -hmm. when I first got into SPD, there'd be times where I didn't know I made a mistake for months. Right. And they're like, oh, hey, by the way, you've been doing this set wrong. And I'm like, yeah. what? I've been doing that. I've probably done that set a hundred times in the last right. three months mm -hmm. and it's been wrong every single time. So wow. um, not only that data, but in the moment. And that's, I think, the challenging part with emotion is when you get pulled into a room, it's usually not, you know, to be like, hey, you guys did great today. Thanks for all of the hard yep. work in SVD. It's usually because there's an issue and it's issue. it's a challenge to, you know, kind of keep your emotions at bay. Mm -hmm. And not always match the energy you might be receiving. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> fire does not extinguish fire, contrary to <laughs> popular belief. Yes. <laughs> You're going to well, end up I mean, in someone's office somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> and then your well, example to you. of the, the count sheet or saying, you know, that you had been assembling that tray wrong, what does the count sheet say? Right. right. Did the right. count sheet tell you the right way to, you know, maybe the count sheet was wrong. Maybe right. we didn't have the right tools. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, it wasn't your fault and we need to, to change that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. So that that is a big thing to me. I may, I would go out on a limb and say I may have been around a little bit longer than the rest of you young beauties. <laughs> and um, back in the day in, in SPD, back in the early 90s, it literally was all nicknames and numbers <laughs> on a type sheet if you were lucky. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, I know there's supposed uh -huh. to be six mosquitoes, six sea humans, whatever. You know, we uh -huh. we knew it in our head because uh -huh. there weren't so many sets. Right. And then to go with Alessandra's, uh, now we've got data. So yep. I have been fortunate to be a part of some instrument optimization projects. Uh -huh. And That's so nice. you see, like you tell somebody how many sets they actually have mm -hmm. to be processed mm -hmm. and what, how many sets are similar and how many sets are different. And you start getting down to the nitty gritty of the data and right. it really becomes maybe I believe, and of course I'm on both sides. I've done OR and SPD. Mm -hmm. I mean, for an OR person, it kind of becomes more real because you're going, Oh my God, they process mm -hmm. 125 sets per day. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. what, how, or you see, you begin to understand what's in those sets and why there may mm -hmm. or may not be, you know, doctor, they don't, we don't do this anymore because we're more technical, but you know, we used to have like Dr. Burns set has mm. one thing different than Dr. Yep. Joe's set, you know, yes. and, and now we've got these data, we've got these mm -hmm. electronic count sheets and we can, I think we can collaborate better when we can figure out that maybe they're not so different and maybe there's a way to work it out. So data can be good. Although back in the day, it was kind of cool because <laughs> we were the only ones that knew what was in the set. Right. <laughs> in SPD, right? You like, couldn't be like, wrong. Oh, we yeah. Have have an oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That mindset <laughs> lingers. That mindset yeah. lingers. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a badge of honor for some folks that they know these things and no one else mm -hmm. does, right? Yeah. Right. So and transparency that. sometimes is the key to customer service yeah. because yeah, maybe we're right. dropping the ball just because we don't know what, what the other person knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never do. Good Never point. Do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Courtney. Well, I was just, you know, I guess, you know, I, I'm kind of bringing this full circle then is, you know, when I think of customer service, I think of relationships and the importance of relationships. Mm -hmm. And when I think of data and what SPD knows today and how we've elevated our profession to what it was 10 years ago, I just wonder if the relationships are better today because our data is better, what we know is better than what it used to be and we have that trust and so our customer service is better because we've elevated our profession you know it just seems like it's yeah. all mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. all goes together full circle hmm. yeah i think there was this level of customer service i know when i first got into spd right like it, it took me even a couple years to realize that at the end of the day the true customer is my patient Right. Mm -hmm. So if if there was a discrepancy in the OR, the physician was frustrated by something, then it was my job to make it right and appease the physician or appease the OR specifically. Um, and being able to go back to the drawing board and empower SPD with some more metrics to say, well, wait a second, you know, realistically, we actually had late vendor drop off. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not just my word against the vendor. Like we actually have data of when the set was checked in and when what? they, they got the message to, you know, give us the set. And that was right. actually a week and a half ago. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like you said, it's leveled us up and I think it's mm -hmm. given SPD another platform and voice to really say mm -hmm. like, well, wait a second, you know, we'll take responsibility, but I think getting to the root of things is bigger picture. Yeah. True. Very true. So I'm also, I'm sorry, Sharon, I just have one more question. I'm just like, I'm with this. You're the co-host. You're here. You're hosting. You're the host. That's us So do you, you know, I'm curious then, do you think that gives us an opportunity to be more proactive Ooh, yes. in our customer mm -hmm. service instead mm -hmm. of reacting to when things yes. go bad? Right. Instead of waiting for the, the post data to come back and tell mm -hmm. us that the, the the staff or the patrons think the rooms are dirty. You know, we see things like leadership rounding where we're going on the floors and we're meeting the patients in their rooms and we're asking them right then and there. How's your service? Yeah. When you press the call light, does the nurse come? Um, is your toast cold or, or, or you know warm yeah. when you get it? And you can immediately rectify a lot of those issues so that they never even show up in your post data. Mm -hmm. You know, but we we did a episode recently on the Process Podcast with Jeff Wirtz out of Sergio Health, and one thing that he said that stuck with me about all the data and the tracking is 
healthcare, even though we have all this, these new robots and tracking systems, we are still infinitely behind most sectors mm. when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. data management, AI. Um, yep. So while it is better, we still have so much more to go. And then mm -hmm. at the same time, we still have these entities that don't even have tracking systems, right? Yeah, or, right. <laughs> like, so exactly. how do we bridge that? that? I think the spectrum <laughs> is so hair. broad. Come on, like we yeah. still have that. <laughs> yeah. Because there is a whole segment that everything we're saying today, they're like, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, we can use this. This software integrates here. And then there yep. is a larger segment. It's yes. like there's so many people who are certified. You know, issue mm -hmm. has some 40,000 people, not to, not even account the CDSPD, but mm -hmm. that's still not the whole number of people working in sterile processing. Right. Right. And so right. there are a lot of facilities out there. Crazy as it may say, you know, I was joking a little earlier, but that's somewhere I guarantee you right now, somebody is still using dish soap. Oh, yes. I, I mean, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I'm not proud of it. And mm -hmm. I definitely don't want to get hurt in that area and have to go to that facility. Mm -hmm. But there is, yeah, there are people without yeah. tracking systems. There are people mm -hmm. who still call, you know, the flippity jit, that yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. and, and you are expected to know. And then how yeah. do you transfer that body of knowledge? Talking mm -hmm. about customer service, mm -hmm. new people coming in. Oh, I, okay. I'm back yeah. out. I'm back out. <laughs> <laughs> employees are a part of your customers too yes and the way staffing and it's a it's a battle out there to so hard now. Staff. Mm -hmm. you know, so now you have somebody coming in who don't know what a flippity jibbit is <laughs> and you're expecting yeah. to just there's a, okay i'm off but i'm just saying like customer service no. man Hey, that's a great point. Um, I have wanted to do this since I've worked on the um, on the industry side, the vendor side. I've always wanted to have like in the booth at ARN and in the booth at um, like now it's HSPA or whatever conference it is, a, a pictures of maybe the top 50 instruments that are used and let people input what they call it. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. That's, that's a good idea. idea. That's amazing. I can, I can, right right we now, all call it something different. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. we do. Like I uh, used to work a lot with um, the proper word is rigid sterilization containers. Come mm -hmm. on. But you go up to the Northeast and they call them caskets. Caskets. Mm -hmm. You know, they call them pans. You call, you call them all these things like, and, who knows what that is if you like you say if you're somewhere where you don't have a system that gives you a formal name for something yeah, yeah. and then you go to another hospital and you're going where's the pan and they're like yeah. what's a pan yeah it's a home in my cabinet <laughs> i just cook breakfast with it yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, i, I think another powerful tool um on that line is social media i mean mm -hmm. seeing oh, yes. It evolve in front of us. And LinkedIn has played a huge piece oh, in that, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I can't tell you the amount of conversations I've either witnessed or participated in with these exact type of things where, you know, even SPD techs who just don't know what they don't know are like, what do you mean right. we're not supposed to use dish soap? And yeah. you're like, oh, little one, let me let me educate you. Here <laughs> Bring today, it right? in. Like, come Bring on. It. <laughs> right? and it's, yep. it's not me versus you or I know more than you do. Like, let yes. me help you and let me expose you to this whole world of things you don't know yet. And let me help your patient. Because yes. regardless of whether or not you know, yes. you're affecting someone every day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On social yep. media, I remember they were roasting the lady with the um, with the hydrogen peroxide. Mm. And Green Golden is Sharon Green Golden actually shared a story with me, so I'm I'm pulling this from her. Yeah. But on social media, she didn't get she didn't get what she may get today. Mm. What I'm saying, this is a great mm. tool. Like she didn't right. get customer service from her peers. You know, we're like who yeah. does that? And that's I'm like you don't know. Mm. You don't know a lot of the tools that you have. You know, automated systems in decontam, mm. where no yeah. one's even having to touch certain things. Mm. Right. Someone else, they're not doing that. They they. Yeah. Still putting stuff in pillowcases, you know? right? And Make the more work. that we are traveling staff and people are moving around like musical mm -hmm. chairs, the more we have to be sensitive to that. That you don't yeah. know yeah. what they were doing at their previous facilities, right? Yeah. And they're doing it still to the best. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. with customer service, okay. So, back to customer service, I love because man, it's so crazy, right? It's so crazy <laughs> yeah. how things can be so dramatically different yes. yeah. from facility to facility from region to region yes. um, so candace did you have another question i just jumped in i got excited <laughs> that's courtney 
I mean, I'll ask. Oh, yeah, you. Courtney, I'm sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Alice, what do you want to know? Yeah, <laughs> so many things. <laughs> well, um, Alessandra, I am. I'm curious. For, you talked about your um, speech or your talk that you're giving um, on Saturday about um, retention. Mm -hmm. How is customer service? Um, this is customer service a part of that. Um, I think of yes. um, relationships and um, you know we we talk so much about pay today and pay is so important. But there's a whole lot of other things that are really important in an organization's culture too. And I just wonder um, how customer service fits into that. Yeah, and I and I think you know it's important for a sale processing industry to understand that even though we all know we we need to be paid more, that paying us more is not going to solve the issues at hand. You know, if this was about not being paid enough, we wouldn't have SPD tax, right? They stay for something. So yeah, what yeah. is that, right? And so um, this weekend, we'll talk a lot about what this customer service retention look like for yourself, right? Because you have mm -hmm. to put your oxygen mask on first. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we avoid taking care of ourselves and really understanding what our expectations are of the people around us, our leaders, our entities, we may burn out, you know, before we even get started. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing, I think it was Marilyn was saying earlier, you have to think about that intershift um, conversation. What does relationships look like between your staff? You know, as a manager, my customer service skills need to be on point. I have to uphold whatever it is I tell them I'm going to do. I have to round back, you know. Yeah. Um, and this makes me think about um, an experience I had using boards to do that shift report. And so you would put up your action items and that they'd have a due date. And it was right there on the board, transparent for you and the entire team. You know, and the updates went there. So everybody got the message. So it's it's really important because you you're a manager of those tasks, but you're also a marketer. You have mm -hmm. to you know, you're an educator. You have to get yeah. the information out to your team. You got to make posters. You have to meet with them, do one on ones, meet with the shifts, meet with your leaders. And so it's a constant customer service is a part of every function of your mm -hmm. day as a manager to some degree. Right. So it's really just am I meeting the need of the person in front of me and am I making sure that I have tools in place that I don't drop these things off my plate because it happens. And mm -hmm. customers will take that personally if you don't make, if you don't make a continuous effort to not have that be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, I have one of my favorite things to tell SVD staff, right? If, if we can't get it right internally, internally, if we can't respect each other, if we can't talk to each other, you know, with that same customer service yes. two-way street, how how in the world are we going to ever expand outside of SPD mm -hmm. into the yes. ORs and with our physicians and with vendors? Like mm -hmm. it starts with us. So if, if we can't answer the phone nicely with our counterparts, come on in the department. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is more. SPD. How can I help you? It's the baseline, okay? Mm -hmm. Not no, what? No. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> supposedly I, I, my fingers aren't doing it when you pick up a telephone it looks like an s and an s is supposed to remind you to smile so nice. you pick up the phone and you smile yeah. huh yeah. if you always start a phone call with a smile somehow it can help you not go where the is it yeah <laughs> what now <laughs> oh, it's an s. It's a it actually slows you down too because sure. where are you rushing through a conversation when you're smiling right. so much I get excited, but it actually slows you down enough to pause. Right. Because a lot of people, if they're pressed for time and they answer the phone, that press for time translates through and you can hear mm -hmm. it in their voice. 100%. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm more likely to forget what I needed to know. Like, oh, hang up the phone and say, oh, dang, was that room three or room yeah. 17? It, every, <laughs> time. every time. <laughs> it is, Never fails. <laughs> That's good. I'm curious, do you have examples for times when that customer service was reciprocated? Hmm. Nice question. Excellent Ooh, question. Very good question. Oh my do you, gosh. You guys, do you mean do you mean like it was the face was an answer in itself? <laughs> right. <laughs> we had to reach that far back. We had to go. <laughs> So oh, for, wow. for clarification, when you say reciprocated, do you mean that you were also given customer service or that yes. your customer service was received well? Mm. That, that you were given customer service. The one that stands Ooh. out to me um, was working with a surge tech that came out of the veterans. Um, and she was she had trained uh, ASTs and she had gone up and done a little review of how our ortho scrubs were breaking down, setting up and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to collaborate as AST and SPD 
um, to give customer service to each other. So she illuminated to us what they needed, how we could help them, how it was impactful. She talked to us about what they could do to help help us, you know, and vice versa. What, is it, what did it take to look at decon? How will this make it go through assembly better? Mm -hmm. And then together we were able to present to the surgeons and say, okay, we've come together and this is our plan to make sure that that issue that happened to you before mm -hmm. where we y'all opened up the trays and they were wet and whose fault was it? Was it my fault that there was water in the cart or your fault for not checking, right? Mm -hmm. Canceled all that out and got to the brass tack. So let's look at our process. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That's impressive. I like it. Yeah, she was impressive. <laughs> it Sometimes is impressive. just somebody saying thank you. Yes. Is, yeah, yeah. Is a, is a customer service from them when you're not accustomed to that? You know, oh, right. you you can say, oh wow, I got oh, a yeah. thank you today. Yeah. You know, it yeah. it, it can be blow me small down. or a great project like you had. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think like you know, smiling, answering when or answering the phone, smiling, same thing. Yeah. My favorite thing to do when I'm calling somebody, cause in a hospital all day long, right. We're making calls. Boop, boop. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need this. Hey, I need that. They need this. Just even when, you know, the person answers the phone, Hey, how's it going? How's your day, man? And it's so yeah. funny when people get caught off guard, right? I'm like, wait, what? What? What do you need? Come on, healthcare industry. We got to do better. That cannot yeah. be our baseline. We got to <laughs> change the better. It's got to start with us. Lateral violence. You know, that makes me think of like when we, when we, we all do it and mm -hmm. it's done to all of us is mm -hmm. I am so busy. I'm just so busy. I'm so busy. Right. You don't understand. Right. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I've definitely we're in the idea. same department. We're all <laughs> exactly. so busy. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you just say, I know you're busy. Yes. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Or right. here's what I'm going to do. I, right. I, I really get that. Sometimes that just is like nails on a chalkboard to me mm -hmm. because it's, it's very redundant to say I'm so busy with yeah. what we yeah. do. Because yeah. Ooh, yeah. if Welcome we're not busy, club. we're obviously locked in a closet at, closet and sucking our thumb because we're traumatized you know obviously I mean, yeah. we're, <laughs> we're supposed to be busy <laughs> and for that to be our default you know it wasn't that long ago that a lot of us were wondering what to do or wondering yeah. where to tell our staff to go during the pandemic right oh, yeah. so it's amazing yeah. how quickly we lose perspective when we get back to normal again and we're like oh, mm -hmm. oh i can't i can't handle all yeah. this like well you know we would have wished for this months ago that's, so, that's beautiful, Candace. That really yeah, is because we much. should be saying, "Oh, thank goodness!" Oh yeah, here we go. We're, thank we're goodness, good now. we are busy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Instead of, I'm so furious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's and good. I did have an example to share. Just you know, as I'm thinking about this customer service too. Um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to work on a team that actually we track all of the the trays that come to decontam, nice. and and give that feedback to the OR. And it's not to be punitive, but it's really to say these trays, none of that, they were all pre-cleaned or pre-treated today. And yeah, you had great. all of your biohazard stickers. And that's great. changing that feedback to, to the OR, where they're providing customer service to us has really mm -hmm. been very powerful to say, it's not just when joint commission, you know, when we've got a service, yeah, right. these yeah. instruments look good every right. single day. Right. And guess what? The instruments that you get back from STD are going to be free of bio burden and look mm -hmm. good every single day. And it, there you go. I, this is, um, I have never worked in an environment like this before, but it, it really strengthens your system when you've got that two way Yes. customer service. Mm -hmm. it's so very you guys powerful. are giving them positive feedback. Yeah. Positive feedback. That's, yep. that's very good. That's yep. very good. It's the same data, but yep. it's, yeah. It's yeah. Positive feedback. Positive right. Positive. right. But like instead that. of you messed up a hundred times, it's yeah. you, you got it right 300 times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. like it. That's very And good. then that dialogue changes for right. us too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause now I feel competent and I can yep. say, okay, right. what can I do about that? Those other hundred times. Cause 300 times I had it. Right. Yeah. You know, rather than ah, I suck at everything. Yeah. 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 And if yeah, there's a dip, right. then we feel disappointed and we want to do better mm -hmm. instead of I'm going to be real defensive because you're right. telling me again. That's a how great much approach. I screwed up. Yeah. yeah it, I love it that. changes the expectation of conversations. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of people, when you get yeah. called to the office, you already have an expectation of what did I do wrong. Right. But now you've changed. Now people are open to whatever conversation is coming mm -hmm. because yeah. the only communication isn't negative. The right. only other person I've heard present information like that is Karen, Karen Cherry. Um, mm -hmm. but she came up from tech all the way on. 
she would be like, okay, well, if that's the error rate, then that means we succeeded this many, yes. you know? That's right. And Let's flip it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I like that. Build, it built confidence mm -hmm. and it wasn't as punitive. It wasn't, no. yeah. No. That's kudos. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love that. Yeah, I still wish I had a snapshot of everyone's face when Courtney <laughs> asked the question <laughs> about it being uh, reciprocated. Everybody, is it like, mm, uh, no. <laughs> she, go to commercial, go to commercial, go to commercial. Go to commercial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. Good job, but, though. Go ahead. Yeah, I also think I just want to say I think it's also important to keep in mind too. Even when like EVS comes into our department, yes, you know, we know what it feels like when the OR is on our case about things. Right. And so then when our department isn't cleaned, it's like, okay, you know, sometimes it feels like it's, you know, pecking order and it's, um, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that's it's, why I said lateral violence is real. It rolls downhill. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I please expound there? Mm. Yeah. One of my, I don't even want to call it a pet peeve. But just like I'm expounding and jumping in here, I jump in on every conversation and I don't need to, but it's something about it. When I hear people say, <laughs> well, they're treating us like dishwashers. Yes. You know, and my, yep. like, who is they? And what's wrong with the dishwasher? Exactly. What are you doing different from how you're saying how they're treating you? Yeah. Right. They're right. treating us like dishwashers. So how are you treating the dishwasher? Like right. you don't have to throw them, you don't have to throw in a whole different department, profession, mm -hmm. no. field, industry to specify what you're doing or what's not, no. if there's an adjustment needed. And so right. when you say that, you say the lateral violence, I, I just feel like things get lost there. Mm -hmm. Right. Very you know, true. And I mean, I think what you said is so important about how are you treating them? Because mm -hmm. it's it's word, but it's also deed. I mean, are you putting yep. full canisters of liquid into the trash can? Are you not putting your cartridge, your hydrogen peroxide, peroxide cartridges in the appropriate container before you put them in the trash? Like, are you making sure that yes. your fellow EVS employee is not going to mm -hmm. be harmed? Because Come if on. you open up that case cart and you're the person mm -hmm. that screams when everything falls out on you, then yep. how dare you There's put no them in harm's way? Yeah. Right. There's no point of abuse and now you have an attitude yeah. but you come yeah come <laughs> yeah I don't want to be the one to spill that bag on me and then find out that there's sharps and blood and you know and, and all these things in this bag that mm -hmm. didn't need to be here mm -hmm. and neither does the yes exactly neither does someone else so yeah I, I'm sorry I love that part thank you so much for expounding on that great question mm -hmm. love all of that because we do have to let's just do our part let's just do our part yeah yep. yeah yeah be mindful that you are not employing the same methods. I just, I say that even with management. Management mm -hmm. is a boomerang. Mm -hmm. yes. Go into leadership and listen to what you're fussing about your entire team doing. And then when no one else is around, go home and ask yourself, how did you perform for your leaders before you got this role? Mm -hmm. Like a lot sure. of times you will see some of the, if you're talking crazy to your team, you cannot be upset when your lead is clowning. Mm. I'm sorry. When your lead yeah. is not being courteous and kind to mm -hmm. someone right. else. Right. Yeah. Clowning. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's almost like parenting, right? Because you got to tell your employee, I used to be an employee too. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's why I know where you went on your lunch break for the extra. <laughs> hey, listen, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Definitely. Um, when we come back, I have some questions for everyone. Like I said, Marilyn, I'm sure you had to make adjustments. So we'll, we'll do some rapid fire. Courtney and I are going to have some rapid fire questions for you. And okay. you guys enjoy yourself. I'll do a little bit of promote uh, productivity work over here, but we're going to take this real quick commercial break. And when we come back, rapid fire. It is already okay. whoa! Five it's already rapid fire. An hour. <laughs> this, is, this conversation wow. has been amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that part. Time okay. flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Right back. <laughs>
right, and we're back. You're watching Knowledge and Nonsense with myself, Sharon Combs, my co-host, Courtney Mace Davis. We also have Marilyn Burns, Candace Kaufman, and Alessandra Nicholson with us. We're talking about customer service and SPD. We just want to take this break right here and say, hey, if you're registered with uh, HSPA, formerly Isham, please go and vote. Go and vote. We want to really see some more engagement in the voting area. Also, mm -hmm. HSPA is coming up in April. It's not too late to get your ticket to register and be there. You're going to see some, some technology that you haven't seen. You're going to see a bunch of people who are passionate about what you're passionate about. So please register for HSPA. And of course, Scrub Ball, which just left, mm -hmm. nominate your people for Scrub Ball. Come on down to Scrub Ball. It's going to be, it's great for career development. Uh, you have access to individuals. You're able to talk with them and really ask questions that will help you individually grow on your trajectory. Mm -hmm. All right, commercials all over. Now, popcorn style, here come the questions. Marilyn, <laughs> yes, Ms. Burns, over your career, were there adjustments you needed to make for your customers based on your role at the time? Oh, wow. Yes, absolutely. So a quick synopsis. So I started out in retail. Customer's always right. I went into banking. I'm always right because I got the money. <laughs> then I went to nursing school, worked in SPD, and at, at that point, I didn't know who was right, right? <laughs> you know, wow. then, I, then I got my nursing degree and started working in the OR. You know, you know how that goes. Man. I've done a lot of, I'm, a, I'm like a psychology, a lot of firstborns knocking around in the OR, barking out orders. And then now, um, then I went into industry. So mm. I'm back to the customers always right. Mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, it's a life cycle. You know, now I'm a consultant, I'm an educator, and um, I've, I think I met Sharon when I was doing a program on um, personalities in our area, in SPD, yes. Yes. and I realized every day you probably have 20 different customers, and you're probably a customer 20 different times, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yes. it's about respect, mutual respect, respecting mm -hmm. other people, and, and trying to be the best person you can be. And believing mm -hmm. in in your your customer service, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So true. That, that's my well said. In a nutshell. I mean, it's a lot longer than that. If you want to. <laughs> yep. Very well said. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, Candice. How about you? What are customer service key points that you embody for your internal customers? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, first and foremost, like Marilyn noted, the the mutual respect. Um, a, a big one that I've noticed, especially through the pandemic, is just having a, a steady level of patience, which I think we all could probably use a little bit more of. Um, not only are we so used to things, you know, getting fixed and, you know, up to speed right now, fix it yesterday, um, but also it seems like the pandemic as a whole really just put a bind on everybody and their level of patience. I mean, I was driving home from work today and the light had just turned green and the, you know, lane next to me, the guy is already honking the horn at the yeah. car in front of him. And I'm like, give him a chance to take his foot mm -hmm. off the brake. Like, good Lord people. And it, it was <laughs> such a moment of like, wow, yeah. like a lot of that is happening uh, yeah. more than it would um, particularly in healthcare because people are burnt out. We're exhausted. We've had to ride this roller coaster. And even in SPD, if we weren't doing surgeries, we were figuring out what to do with our staff or how to break news to them that we couldn't have them working. And, you mm -hmm. know, so it, it's been a challenge, that mutual respect and understanding that like, hey, you know, um, our physicians had a hard time during the pandemic. Our vendors had a hard time. Our patients had a hard time. They had to go yeah. through delays. So we're all feeling it. We're in it together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's not going to get done any faster just by, you know, being a rude squeaky wheel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might be blowing the horn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. When's the last time complaining never sped somebody up? You know, yeah. increase their yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right? Bees and honey, right? There's a saying about that. Yeah. <laughs> Only a Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. TikTok is giving us a new world. And, you know, mm. you get people over there saying, yeah, I smiled in your face, but I spit in that cup. Yeah, no, you know, so you know, <laughs> now we don't want to, yeah, we don't want anybody spitting, but you're right. When earlier, let me jump back to this earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Candace and Alessandra, you guys were saying like how things that were needed, you have to be an educator, you have to be this, you have to be that. And I, I, I smile because that is a new, it's not new to you, 
it may not even be new to me, mm-hmm. but industry wide, that is a mm-hmm. that's a that is a new concept. Yeah. Yes, that it sounds good, but how do we plug it in? Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a difference between plug and play this generation and plug and play mm-hmm. another generation because someone else may be like, well, I don't have to be any of that. I'm the manager. Right. Just right. do what right. I say. Right. What is the problem? I said it. Why is it not done? You know, again, yeah. yeah. Some people don't even have tracking systems, you know? Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. when you when we're talking about the TikTok, so many things are changing, even in customer mm-hmm. service. Mm-hmm. There are really mm-hmm. employees out there who are like, you need to serve me. Yes. What's in it for, with them, What's baby. In it What's for in me? it for me? Mm-hmm. I know how to do the trades with them. And then there are really leaders out there who are like, how dare they? Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. arrogance, clutching pearls. Right. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. customer You're right. Service, yeah. and, yes. Um, it's, it's a new age. It's a, it's a new age. And and with that comes the learning curve. The learning so, curve. you know, you, you also have to be okay with being wrong or be mm-hmm. okay with getting the feedback, right? So as the leader, we have to set the tone, right? And one thing mm-hmm. I, I love telling my newer leaders or a new preceptor, right? It's always, you know, not fun to watch them squirm under pressure, but like, you'll see them say stuff. And I'm like, we don't do that here at all. Why did you tell the newbie that? And they're like, cause I didn't know what to say. And I'm like, wow, it's okay to say that it is. Oh, I do not yeah. expect you to know everything. It's okay to say, you know, what? I'm not sure, but let's find out together. Right. Yeah. right. Own that. I will back you on that every single time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So, okay. Do people really just say what she just said? <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. And I've heard it. <laughs> Is Man. that kind of like the customer service being reciprocated again? We're we're going there, right? We're reaching mm-hmm. for it. We're trying. Yep. We're trying. Yep. And you know what? And we are trying, and we're not going to give up with it. We have to keep chopping wood. You know, repetition is the father skill. Nothing comes because you mentioned it once. You have to have some tenacity with what you're implementing. So keep trying. That's I'm giving you a hard time because I like to push back a little bit, but I'm on board with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kudos to it. Right. Yeah. What about external customers? Mm. What of them? <laughs> like, how do we, what are key points that we look for for our external mm-hmm. customers? We have vendors. Yeah. Are we still, you know, I've, I've only been in this industry for about 12 years. Mm-hmm. 2008, I started doing some work with SIPs. Mm-hmm. But at that time, no one was giving any vendors any pushback. You know, mm-hmm. scopes were walking out of the department. Come on, you know, and you better not say somebody just walked out with it. SPD was getting all the credit. Mm. And so mm-hmm. what about like your the external customers, people mm-hmm. who are not inside yeah. the department, so to speak? How, what are key points that we want, mm-hmm. we want to see in our customer service to and with them? Mm-hmm. I think starting with clear rules of engagement, because, you know, they need to know what you expect for them when they come on into the facility, you know, down to where do they need to park? You know, what do they need to wear? Who do they need to talk to? Mm-hmm. Uh, what can they touch? You know, all these things really do need mm-hmm. to be outlined and not have the expectation that they just know. Because, you know, I've, reps, I've had reps that mean well, but maybe they drop instruments on the floor and, and they don't understand why it's not okay to just, you know, r- brush it off on their shirt. That's mm-hmm. not their area of expertise, but it's mine. So, mm-hmm. I, need, you know, I need to set the tone of how we play in this sandbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also being sensitive to the fact that they are they are running a business on behalf of their entity too. Mm-hmm. They have other barriers. Like don't tell them that they can get their trades next and decontaminate if that's not the truth. <laughs> you know? right. So just yeah. clear communication and clear expectations. Mm-hmm. That I, I can say, of course, I'm I'm mess been on every side, it seems like, but um as a vendor, it's really I've trained sales reps for some companies and tried to explain what we do and why they need to do things. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go ride with you today. And I realize how hard it is to find a place to park, Mm -hmm. to get through the vendor credentialing system, check in, get your, either get your scrubs that you get out of a machine, whatever you have to do Mm -hmm. to actually get to us in SPD. We need to understand, we need to tell them what they're going to have to do or we, and we also need to understand what they're doing because yeah. mm-hmm. if the guy's not there to give you the badge because he's having a bad day or whatever. Your vendors can't get to you. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I'm the, I, when I'm on the side of receiving a tray or something from a vendor and they're late or whatever, I'm not anything other than poor customer service. And I feel mm-hmm. like you may be the same because we're like, 
you knew you were supposed to be here at one o'clock. Yeah. Excuse you. Know, you. Know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you knew. And then it's yeah. like, but it, you know, we don't understand. It took them three hours. Right. To get they from the didn't know it was going to take that time. To the department. So yeah. it's, I love what you said about clear expectations. And we need to think very granularly mm. about yeah, that. Yeah, very practically. Like, mm -hmm. be prepared for what you want to receive. If you want the vendors here and you want things unboxed before they get your department, where's your breakout room? You know, where's your, <laughs> where are yeah, all these you things? You got to tell them you, where to go. Got to yeah. make space. It's a great point. Fabulous point. I think to that too, right? We still have to also um, make sure that we're offering. Like, what you missed the mark. How can I support yeah. you instead of yeah. just like me? This guy's not allowed to come back, or yeah. you know, she. Yeah, I'm going to another company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, the, she every time, or they, right? So yes. bringing up those trigger words again, because always, always, no, always, we, we we do it with our vendors too, right? We're yes. like oh, yeah. every time, always. every time. Yeah. 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 So, so we, Candace, I I have a couple more questions. I know yeah. we're running out of time here, but um. How do you protect your direct reports from customer service violators or abusive personalities? It's a great question. Um, I think as a, a leader, you, you always play this buffer a little bit. Um, yeah. I like to stay as transparent as I can. So anytime I can have an interaction with e either a, a vendor, a physician, the OR, and maybe it's a less than savory one, allowing my staff to see how I navigate it, right? Um, we're all human. Mm -hmm. so. We're not going to be perfect every single time, but here's some cues that I can pick up on, right? Or here's some things that I can help share uh, with staff. That way, when they are experiencing those things, they know how to navigate. Um, and for me, it's all about being mindful of not matching that negative energy. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to make sure that you take that extra second and that, you know, take that deep breath. Um, because the reality is, is I'm not going to be there every single time to be right. that buffer. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm more prone to help teach them the skills of how to navigate these things. And hey, listen, if you tried it and you're still not getting anywhere with the conversation, then escalate. Don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to fight that fight by yourself. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And is there any way too. that you wish you could protect them that, that you can't? Oh, or... <laughs> so many ways, right? It's like, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I can't remember who said it earlier. Like, it's like having kids, right? Is that Alessandra? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. It's, <laughs> I don't have human children. I have fur babies, but mm -hmm. at, at work, I have 20 children, right? So yeah. being able to, um, again, instill you know, the skills in them to be successful in those interactions because they're the boots on the floor, right? I, I do my rounding. I love being in the department, but they're the ones that are going to have these interactions on their phones, you know, with internal ER, uh, radiology, all these other departments on top of vendors and physicians and their counterparts back in decon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and, and if I get put in a situation, I have to be mindful. That's, that's one of the biggest things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I've, I've had OR staff hang up on me mid conversation because they're frustrated. Yeah. Um, and staff, you know, they get like wide eyed, like, oh, here we go. And I'm like, I'm like, we're we're gonna go, we're gonna go chat about it, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. it's not a thing. It, I'm not gonna take it personal. I don't expect you guys to take it personal and then take it out on that employee later, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it it was an in the moment thing. I understand their stress. Um, that's not an excuse, but you know, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna address it and we're gonna be better mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's a key yeah. point, too, is just having a like my grandma used to always say, you train people how to treat you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's bad customer service and there's abusive personalities, but there are lines to this. And, yep. you know, there are never events that we yeah. have to be able to go to HR or escalate or call the regional managers of the companies or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. we need to do, because there's a line between you being frustrated and demonstrating that to my staff and then you being truly abusive to them. And, yeah. you know, they're never going to be put or I will try my best to not allow them to be in a situation where abuse right. is tolerated or acceptable. You know, it's OK right. if they just keep yelling and screaming at me. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. It's just it's a bad precedence. Yeah. Bad tone to set. Lead by sure. example. Lead exactly. By and by your example. staff want to know that you have their back. Right. They, yeah. they want to know that that's not allowed because traditionally in SPDs, a lot of techs have had to face mm -hmm. like, well, that you just have to deal with it. That's yeah. just yeah. part of being an SPD tech. Yeah. 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 Put, put on your big girl panties. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, statements like that don't make you, you know, those statements to me are best from someone who may be a mentor or they mm -hmm. have a relationship with you where you know right. they're for you. But for someone that you 
you don't have that for them to, I feel like that's one of the most dismissive statements. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And you're not seeing my agony, my tragedy. Right. I am going through yeah. it right now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Right. Yeah. 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 I got some thoughts for you. But <laughs> yeah, I don't think that builds trust in an in no. a brain. And that's the key is that it, once you start creating an unsafe environment, this is going to trickle down into your, your quality. If yeah. I don't feel safe at work, then I'm not reporting issues for myself or others. I don't feel like I'm yeah. part of the team. And it's service is going to suffer eventually mm -hmm. with that lack of trust. Yeah. And then retention. And then yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's a yeah. tough fulfilling prophecy. I had a I had a general manager mm -hmm. one time explain to an entire OR when we asked, why, why what are you doing to keep our staff and what, what's going on? And he's told the team blankly, you eat your young. It doesn't matter how, how many of them I hire. When I bring them mm -hmm. in here, you tear them apart. So they leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Kudos to him. Yeah, yeah. He in a firing squad, because you know, a room full of SPD techs, RNs, and ASTs. We were like, <laughs> we want answers now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get that position control out of here. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's, a, it's about two minutes after nine. I want to say thank you all so much. Did yep. anyone have any other way that they wanted to speak on how you protect your direct reports? um from violators or abusive personalities or something you've seen work before we leave we want to be mindful of time uh mm -hmm. this this has been amazing i've learned mm -hmm. i love the energy and the yeah. just the authenticity i love it so much does anyone have anything else they would like to say or share I about just add to to remind employees and, and patrons alike you deserve respect in these mm -hmm. spaces and if you don't get it it's okay to escalate and let people know that that didn't happen for you so that we can really round back and, and fix that situation mm -hmm. yeah agreed yes agreed agreed mm -hmm. all right yeah. well thank you so much courtney Mage davis co-hosting with me doing the thing great questions great questions put a stomper on them i thought i had that best <laughs> yeah. courtney made everybody just pause like when I <laughs> thank you for the invite it was fun <laughs> Very yeah, fun. No, it's Great. been amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to remind everybody, Alessandra is speaking. Um, position control, good All advice. Right. Alessandra is speaking this Saturday. Uh, there's 10 CEUs. Go ahead and get your CEUs. Get them. And, 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 and this is, uh, I don't think there's, is there a fee associated? Um, no, this is a free yeah. conference. I'm, and yeah, on. I know Sarah right. Cruz on the bill. There's a few folks that are speaking, but absolutely come get your CEUs. Yeah, come get, get your some CEUs. fresh education. I have placed the link in there in the comments as well. So where, whatever platform you're watching on, go ahead in there. You can get the link from there. And uh, yeah, go ahead and get those CEUs and there. Vote, vote, vote. Vote, yeah. vote, vote. Vote, I vote, would. vote, vote, vote. So it's been great. Um, what else do I want to say? Again, just kudos to you, Courtney. Marilyn, thank you so much. Candace, thank, thank you. so much. Alexandra. Blast. Join us next week. Oh my gosh, we have a bunch of educators going to be on here talking about infection prevention and education. My face won't be in the place, but we have a dynamic co-host coming there who will be Luane Perkins. And please get out to a live show. Yes. First of all, yes. going anywhere. Sure. Highly recommend get it. Get out to a live show, yeah. man. Right. Let's do this. All right, y'all. Y'all be safe and God bless. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Good job. Bye. Bye.